G'day, I'm the Home Distiller and today we're going to do a quick overview on my new vacuum system that I just completed. We're doing um, plasma and uh, Geissler tubes and X-ray tubes and, any other, and a CIT and all that kind of stuff. So um, hopefully you'll see some cool projects on that soon. You can hear it running in the background because I just had it running and doing the video. So uh, let's get cracking. So this is pretty much the final vacuum system. Um, all I've got to do now is put some rubber feet on the bottom. Um, I had the rubber feet from the the bottom of the vacuum pump because um, they're rubber. They're um, the vacuum pump itself has been mounted on on these little guys, so it's got anti vibration. Ampers. I had to use six of them, um, so I drill a couple more holes. But I was going to use the rubber feet, the original rubber feet, off the vacuum pump to sit the whole system on. But I've lost one, so I have to get some more feet. Um, I'm not sure it's properly. It should be around this area here somewhere, but <laughs> where? Uh -huh. um, I'm going to make a new board for the top as well. But this is just a temporary. I just quickly sort a bit out, but of a bit that was um, already kind of the right width. It's a little bit, it's about 10 mil too narrow. Um, so I'll see how we go with that anyway. So we got our vacuum, main vacuum output, input, whatever you want to call it, up here, um, and eventually this this plate big honking sheet of aluminium will sit on top and I'll machine a hole and put that in there which will go which will go straight down through that hole you know down through there and connect to the vacuum system and have a that way I'll be able to use a a bell jar of types on the top um, uh, at the moment I have a an adapter on there to put most of my other fittings on. I'm going to make a shorter adapter up which will just be a, rather than having a cone on it, I'm just going to get a, an end cap, um, two inch end cap drill and weld that in there so I'll just have a flat adapter nice and short um, and that should just should just be above the top of the the wasteboard here so so this will be my my back filling system um, I've got I'll bring it up anyway um, Got a gauge, I think I showed you this in my last video. Hopefully this valve will seal well enough. Um, I'll put my um, Peroni gauge or whatever it is on top of this system and check that this valve doesn't leak. Um, if it does then I'll, I'll get a better one. It's just a cheap, cheap, cheap valve. So, um, And a needle valve. A needle valve on the side for backfilling. Um, I should have probably clocked the bloody thing a bit better, but that's, that'll be right. So that'll sit on top of the system, hook my my tube into the top here with an O-ring, and then I can, rather than having to backfill the entire system when I do eventually get some of the expensive gases, um, rather than have to backfill the entire system, which is probably, oh, it'll be a good leader. Of, of system that I'd have to backfill, I can just shut this off and then backfill um, on top of the, the vacuum system. So I've got the Peroni gauge in here, um, vacuum pump, a shorter, here we go, a shorter riser that I put in here and I made this 35mm because it does tend to suck because when you've shut it all down this bit here is Kind of open to atmosphere through the pump so it kind of sucks a bit of oil up through the pump so I think I'm gonna 
put a little screen, just a little piece of stainless steel screen in there so the oil can kind of hit that and rather than get bloop. Because the other one, I, this riser that I pulled off that I had here originally was all full of oil that had kind of been blooped up through it. So um, that should eliminate that. It hadn't actually got up around this bend, so that's fine. Um, because I don't really want that oil to run down into the diffusion pump. Um, but I'll keep an eye on that there. Now on the f so I've got my Corona gauge, um, water cooling in like all contained water cooling for the oil diffusion pump, which also blows. Cables okay, get tugged, which also blows. Over the over the pump, the, the part that requires cooling as well, so it's a little bit extra. Um, I've had this running for uh, half an hour or 40 minutes, and I actually had more pro more problem. I think I'm going to have to add another fan to the mechanical pump because I had more problems with that getting hot than than this system. Um, and then we have our input into the main system on the side here and also it's a the um, bleed out so I can I can um, uh, let the vacuum or let air into the system um, I have a one one valve on the top of the diffusion pump and another valve just so I can isolate the diffusion pump um, and then a second valve here on the Um, let's see if we can see that. So I've got one one valve here which runs to the diffusion pump. There's another valve on top of the diffusion pump, and then there's another valve here. So I can actually isolate the diffusion pump, keep it under vacuum, do what do whatever changes I want above the vacuum the vacuum pump, then um, pump with the vacuum pump. Oh, with the oil diffusion pump still closed, I can then pump all of this system down um, back down to the mechanical pump and then open the diffusion pump back up into the system so it's never exposed to atmospheric pressure. Um, it's always kept under vacuum. Yeah, the vacuum will probably rise a tiny bit inside it, but nothing to worry about. It should stay within, you know, in, in the fine range. Um, I have a little 12 volt. Um, power supply down here, which runs the pump, which is an old computer water cooling pump. This is the radiator. It's another old computer cooling radiator, and the, basically the whole cooling system is um, uh, computer water cooling. Um, and I'll, I've got some photos of the of the um, frame with nothing mounted on it, but it was a lot of hobbledy cobbledy to try and get everything to fit. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud with how crammed in I got it. So, and um, it's not, it's heavy, but you know, at least now I can pick, pick it up and throw it under the bench when I don't want it, rather than the oil diffusion pump sitting on a block of wood like it was. Um, and the whole, the whole system is rubber mounted within the frame, so a lot of the vibration is is damped, is dampened in the frame before it gets out in onto the bench and because that was a problem with the diffusion pump sitting on the bench here it was loud everything was vibrating around I've also used two rubber mounts the wobble settled down I've used two rubber mounts on the um, oil diffusion pump so I can loosen this nut and then spin this one and actually adjust it to make sure it's all level um, which I haven't actually done yet but um, yeah, this just allows me to to kind of tilt and twist the the diffusion pump and get it fairly level because um, there's only a little bit of oil in the bottom and you want it to kind of be fairly evenly spread. And while I've got you down here, that's the um, that's actually a motor speed control, an old cheapy off eBay, just pulse width modulation um, thing. They're garbage for motors, but they work quite well as a power to vary the power of a 
um, resistive load, say a, you know, as a as a dimmer. Basically, they work well as a thousand watt dimmer. Um, even though this uh, element in the bottom in the bottom of the oil diffusion pump is only 500 watt, um, yeah, that means it won't ever get hot and that kind of stuff. And I might actually stick some something over the top of these because they're all they're all open, so I don't want anything to fall in there. I might just stick a bit of packing, you know, or a bit of aluminium tape or something over just to cover the holes. They shouldn't get hot. Uh, the the 12 volt supply is hardly anywhere, not anywhere near its load. Um, same with that. That's half power, so it, it should be fine. Um, oh, you know, I'll be able to tell if it gets too warm, and I'll have to deal with it from there. Um, but yeah, as I said, I think I'm going to have to do something with the cooling on this. I have seen people drill holes in the side and put another um, a radiator on the side of these, but um, it would just rely on um, thermo siphoning for for the oil to move around. So I'm not sure if that how much of an effect that would have. Um, it may have some effect, but. Um, trying to do it without getting airlocks and all the rest of it, it would be <coughs> nigh on impossible. So unless you added a pump to pump the oil around, but uh, it's, you know you're just asking for contamination and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do there. Probably just install a fan in the side here, another 120 mil fan or something like that just kind of blowing blowing a bit of air over it and see how that goes but um all right let's fire her up you can see that I, I don't have the the radiator anywhere near full sorry the reservoir anywhere near full but that's because I can see the the output dancing away there so I know that pump pump is okay and running if I can get your thumb in shot. Hello, here we go. Um. Open all the valves up. So I've got all the valves open at the moment. I normally leave the whole system under under vacuum um, just to make sure that the all the rubber in the um, valves and all the rest of it will actually turn the, the power up on the on the fusion pump um, to make sure that all the valves, um, the rubber in all the valves and the oil in the um, oil diffusion pump basically say stay as degassed as possible so we're getting down to 9.9 you know, .9 to the minus 2 um, so we're heading down to about as low as this pump will get by itself and you'll notice that it actually it'll actually go up a little bit as the oil in the diffusion pump gets hot and starts to um, well, actually, it might not this time because it's been sitting there, so maybe completely degassed. But once you get it to hot, it'll kind of boil off any of the dissolved gases or anything in the oil, and and you get a little bit of a pressure rise, and then that will let you know that you're you're not far off boiling. So I'll leave, I'll leave this up flat out until I just start to see the vacuum drop, and then I'll turn this down to about. 80%, 70%, something like that. I know, there you go, as you can see, the uh, um, pressure has actually risen. So we shouldn't be far off, and all of a sudden you can see it just, just drop down really quickly once it starts boiling, which we're not far off happening. 
sucking at the wrong direction slightly, but so we'll turn, the, turn the heat down a little bit. Again, this, this gauge, we're, we're right at the limit of its accuracy, so it could be a lot lower, it could be a bit higher than that. This gauge is really, once you start getting down to that kind of pressure, not very accurate. Um. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm the Home Stiller. That was a quick overview of the new uh, oil diffusion pump, vacuum system, frame, doohickey, what's a magic. Um, hope you enjoyed if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. And um, we'll have some plasma and high voltage stuff coming shortly with this puppy. Thank you very much.